As you'll see during this episode, protests in Vienna are pretty common. This one, happening on April 26, was one protesting the deportation and of refugees from the capital. Antifa occupied a building close to the Rathaus, the parliament in the centre of the city, and a friend of mine was actually inside at the time. They barred the doors and made sure no one could come in or out. It ultimately ended with the police storming the building, but, but as we'll see, things would get well, during the month of May anyway, things will get progressively and progressively more crazy. On a sunny Saturday on May 1st at Otterkringer Station, 12 o'clock, is where the demonstrations began. It was an extremely large protest, although starting small. There were many groups there, Antifa, feminists, anti-capitalists, climate activists, all there showing their support for each other and showing the, showing the government that they meant business. What started off as less than 100 grew to over 200, over 300, and as the march kept going, which was heading towards the centre of the city, it just became massive. This in the feminism, anti-capitalist march. It's absolutely massive. I think it's going to be a good day. Let's hope. Stay tuned. I swerved back and forth between the groups. This was particularly the Antifa group. They lit up flares, flew flags, and sent out huge phrases towards the police, saying defund the police, get rid of the cops, Antifa. Every so often, a speech would take place. The whole parade would stop, and we'd take five, 10 minutes to hydrate, rest, and listen to what people had to say bringing on several guests, speaking about injustice, intolerance, and how to make things better. I was there with a couple of my friends and Lucas who invited me along. We marched and we marched, and this is us along the Gürtel, the U6 metro line. Slowly, we were making our way towards Votivkirch, which is the big church in the center of the city where speeches would be held and songs would be sung. Unfortunately, when we got there, there were hundreds of police waiting for us. An event happened where a woman was on, taking a picture on top of a car and a policeman took her down. She fell and that provocated some people to hurl insults at the police. This then escalated and ended up with pepper spray, beatings and arrests. Many people were injured, as you can see here. There were just many, many police cars. This was supposed to be a peaceful protest, but in the few months that I've lived in Vienna, this was the most violent thing I'd ever seen happen in the city. As the police began to build a shield wall, so did the protesters. They called out to the police, asking why. Why are you doing this? They held up their hands to show that they were peaceful. And they said, hello. So the police are just leaving. 
the Palace of Gong. Several people have been arrested during the clash, one of whom was a cousin of a friend of mine. So we all went to the police station to wait for them to be released. Luckily, we only had to wait a few hours, but some people were more unlucky and had to wait overnight until seven o'clock the next morning. So I'm on my way to Karlsplatz right now because there's a demonstration going on. Uh, every time a woman is killed as a result of domestic violence or domestic abuse, they, uh, they hold a little demonstration in uh, the city of Vienna uh, in honor you know, to protest you know, domestic violence and domestic abuse. So this is where I am and I think it's gonna be a very peaceful uh, demonstration. These demonstrations in particular were about domestic abuse and violence against women. Ten women had died at time of recording in Austria since the beginning of the year. This was to show the people, the government, the lawmakers that the people of Austria were serious about this. The plan was to march towards the headquarters of the affiliated political party of the murderer. Police, of course, blocked the way for the protesters to enter the street in which the party headquarters were located. But still, things were peaceful. The protesters clapped, cheered, demonstrated and chanted outside, all with no harm or fuss. Things were peaceful and well until. An Iraqi migrant living in Vienna by the name of Yad had mistakenly swore in a conversation past a police officer. The police officer mistakenly thought that he had been swearing at him and therefore asked to uh, take him in for his ID. He refused and so. This ensued. They dragged him round the corner and held him there, forming a police wall for about five, ten minutes. He was let go. Yad joked afterwards that the police harass him about five times a week and that he doesn't really need to go to the gym because the police work his arms and legs from the beatings they gave him. His phone was taken on Saturday on the May 1st protests as well. I talked to Yad about racial profiling in Austria, and he said ever since he started dating in Austria, things have gotten better. He used to get harassed every, nearly every day, if not every day. But now it's five times a week, he said, so it's not so bad. His friend stuck beside him and waited until the police were done with him, and he was released.